everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another pick a card reading. Today's reading is timeless, so whenever you stumble across this, you are meant to see it. So we're doing a pick a card about self-care. So um, what are your blockages and what can you do to unblock those blockages to really focus on you and take care of you? It's really hard to do that sometimes. And so we're gonna kind of dive a little bit deep today um, and really focus on your inner self and how we can help. So if you've not been to my pick a card readings before, all I ask you to do is to get into a calm, quiet, centered space Take a couple deep breaths and really let your intuition pick the pile for you. The message will resonate a lot better for you if you do this. And keep in mind, this is a general reading. So take what does resonate with you and know that there's a message for you in here somewhere. So these are the piles for you guys to choose from today. We have three groups. So we have group number one is the Everyday Witch Tarot. Group number two is the Modern Witch Tarot. And group number three is the Light Seers Tarot. The timestamps for these groups will be down in the description box below, as well as in the pinned comments by me. So that way you can skip ahead to your particular group. If you choose more than one group, that's perfectly fine as well. So just know that you'll be able to skip ahead to your particular one. With that being said, I will see you in your particular group. Hello, my group number ones, those of you who chose the Everyday Witch Tarot deck, we're gonna take a look at your personality types. We're gonna take a look at the blocks. We're gonna take a look at how to overcome the blocks and then some self-care tips, all right? So we have the self-care cards. And first we're gonna take a look at your personality type. So these are the archetype cards and there are three of them so you can have one or all or a combination of these we're going to look at both the light and the shadow attributes so the first one here is martyr the light attribute being learning the learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause and the shadow would be addiction to self-pity and the shadow attribute is what normally gives this uh, personality type a negative connotation right always wanting the attention that sort of a thing, or I do this because I get attention. Um, but we're focusing on both sides of the coin today with just the personality types. Um, maybe we're getting into a little bit more of a deeper understanding of ourselves today. The second personality type card we have is the Liberator, or what I like to call the Daenerys card. Um, <laughs> the light attributes would be freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns. So um, freeing yourself from things that tie you down, to freeing yourself from outdated um, uh, uh, systems and beliefs and releasing those negative thought patterns. But the shadow attributes of this card is imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate or ignoring legitimate constraints. Because sometimes constraints are put in place for a reason, right? So we don't want to just go forth and break the chains, right? So there's your light and shadow of the liberator. And then we have warrior, which is very similar to the um, liberator, right? So the light attributes would be strength, skill, discipline, and toughness of will, heroism, stoicism, and self-sacrifice in conquering the ego. So the shadow attributes would be trading ethical principles for victory at any cost and indifference to the suffering inflicted on others. So it's very similar to the liberator. Now, again, you can have one or all or a combination of these if that um, resonates with you guys, but um, you guys really like to fight for a cause or really like to fight for the weaker or the underdog person. Um, while that is amazing and great and wonderful, there is also that part of your personality that you're so focused on fighting and helping others that you forget to put yourself first, right? That yourself comes second or last even, right? So you're fighting for your family, you're fighting for you know friends, you're fighting for um, systems and causes, but that always comes first. Yourself comes, um, you're put on the back burner, right? So therefore, that's what we're kind of looking at today. Um, your personal personality type is kind of dictating how you 
take care of your self-care or lack thereof, right? So let's go ahead and see what is your block, okay? What is blocking you from taking care of yourself, from moving forward and letting yourself become the front burner, right? And so the block is death. And normally this is a beautiful card of transformation and endings to beginnings because when one door closes, the other one opens and we're cutting ties and we're moving on, right? But since we're talking about this being a block, this is really not letting go of fear, not really having the chance to let go of the past. You, you know, you're holding on to it. You're holding on to fear, really fear of change, fear of anything and everything of, of what's going to happen to this person what's going to happen to me. You're not letting go of that. And I understand completely about holding on to the past, holding on to things that scare us or, you know, not confronting those things, but you are a warrior. You are a liberator. And you know what? You can fight for those things. You can push through your fear. And I feel like this it has a lot to do with your subconscious that, you know how sometimes when, um, like for me, for instance, I uh, have anxiety, but I can push that anxiety down if I'm uh, helping others out or I like, so for instance, if you have a problem with public speaking and you have to do a group project and you have to speak in front of people and your partner has a really tough time with group speaking, public speaking, you automatically fight and liberate her or him from that because you see the issue. And so therefore you take charge and you public speak. Hopefully this is all making sense because this is just in my head and it's coming out. So maybe someone had to hear that. That was a story for somebody. Okay. But my point being is this is a block for a lot of you. So in, it can come in different ways and shapes for a lot of you, but we're going to talk about ways to overcome those blockages, that block to put ourselves first, to put you guys on the self care track. Okay. To overcome this blockage. And the first we have the five of cups. So, this is a message for you guys to stay positive and to not focus on the negative that's going on right here. You have so much positive around you and so many other things to look forward to, to celebrate that you aren't paying attention to them right now. And you're focusing on every little negative thing that's going on. So this is a message for you guys to yes, take your time and be sad, but turn around, notice the positive and focus on that. Okay. Then we have the devil. So this is interesting because this really goes along with the liberator card here, because when we're talking about freeing yourself from the blockages, this is literally a blockage right here. This is freeing yourselves from the chains that are holding you down quite literally. So you can break free from the ties that no longer serve you, right? This is a message that you can be free now. All right. So hopefully that makes sense because this is a card about, um, having those chains and having temptation and having manipulation around you or, you know, having, um, specific, you know, contracts. So like, um, how to explain it. Like if you're in a really bad relationship, breaking free from that contract of a relationship. Okay. Or a really bad job breaking free from that. So basically this is a message saying that you can liberate yourself. You need to liberate yourself, right? Okay. Then we have the tower. Okay. Again, interesting. You guys have a lot of, uh, major arcana cards. So this is, basically telling yourself to surrender and to take time to recover because this talks about, you know, destruction and having breakthroughs. Um, you know, things have to be broken down in order to be rebuilt with the tower card, 
obviously. So we're breaking those chains, we're breaking things down and we're having that enlightenment about it. We're having that breakthrough moment and we are going to rebuild, right? So this is saying that, yeah, you know, we're breaking things, we're breaking, breaking walls down and we're rebuilding. And then we have the emperor. So this talks about putting your practical matters first. This is all about authority, security, control, order, ambition, being a leader. So taking charge of yourself, taking charge of what you want out of, you know, your life and out of where you want to go. And you guys are such warriors and leaders in, in every other bit of the war, the sense, right? But now it's time to put that focus and authority over yourself and taking care of yourself. Okay. You know, putting practical things first. So you know what you guys, it's okay. If you need to make lists, it's okay. If you need to, you know, really figure out your next step. But the important thing is, is you're rebuilding and you're breaking free and you're going through and doing the things you need to do for yourself. And remember, we cannot give from a place of empty. So if you are constantly thinking about others and fighting for others, if your battery is dead, you can no longer give anymore, right? So you need to take time to really recharge, take a breath and understand that it's okay to take some time to do so. And your last card, okay, is the world. And so this is talking about completion. So this is reminding you to enjoy your success Enjoy the fact that you love doing things for other people. You love being there for other people, but also know that it's okay to complete the cycle, that it's okay to really liberate and fight for other people and really do a service for other people. But now you're taking that completion of a cycle and doing that for yourself. So when we're talking about blockages here, this is really telling you that it's okay to close that door, even if it's just for an hour. It's okay to close it because you're opening yourself up to like success and um, rebuilding in a different way, in a different form. Hopefully this is making sense. I like see it in my head so clear for you guys and trying to explain it sometimes comes out a little mumbled, but I love the fact that you guys are so focused on being a fighter for those who need it or for things that need it. But you guys also need to realize that you need it too. So this is that block for you guys. This is really, you know, needing to let go and needing to, you know, kind of face your fears. So a lot of this is like, okay, if I stop doing it for somebody else, and do it for me, are they gonna be okay? Is that gonna be okay? Will the world keep turning? And the world will keep turning, okay? It's all right to take five minutes out of your day, you know, and focus on you. It's okay to, you know, take a day off and actually have a day off. A lot of the, the world right now is about, okay, you know, I've got two days off and I'm gonna use it cleaning and I'm gonna use it for errands and this, that, and the other. While that's great, you need to take time to relax, take time to recharge your batteries. Okay. Everybody's going to still be there. The world is still going to be there. The, the causes that you're fighting for are still going to be there, but also fear of change. Fear of change could be anything for, from fear of change of a routine to fear of, you know, where is this new direction taking you? And sometimes we need to face it head on, right? We need to face, the fear in order to move forward and have that change to break free, you know? All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at some self care tips from your self care Oracle here. So look for fairies is your first one. And what I look at with this card is not necessarily you going out and looking for fairies. I'm seeing this as using your imagination, looking for the magical in everyday life, right? looking for that beauty in everyday life. So really being able to use your imagination to, um, you know, think about what makes you happy. Think about what you liked as a child, what made you happy as a child. 
those sort of things. Look for the magic in everyday life, all right? Then we have family. So this kind of makes sense being the personality types that are here. Spending time with family, really, you know, taking time out and being with family, really having like, you know, it could be anything, you know, whether it's game night with family or dinner with family or, you know, just watching whatever you guys enjoy as a family together. So taking time out and being part, being together with your family. We got two more. Deep breathing. This is essential, I think, for anybody. Deep breathing. Take some deep breaths. It really gets you calm. It really gets you centered. It really lets you focus on the here, the now, the present. Okay. And your last self-care card is create art. <clears throat> so anything creative. So I feel like this kind of goes hand in hand here. Um, painting, you know, whatever kind of art you like, you know, it could even be bulletproof or the bullet, <laughs> the bullet journaling, whatever that is, um, you know, cause you get kind of doodly and creative with that. It could be, you know, painting a mural on your wall, whatever the case may be, create art. It really lets your imagination and your mind wander. It's coloring in those little color book, coloring books. It's winding your mind down and really kind of just letting yourself relax and not focus on every single little itty bitty thing. All right. <clears throat> okay. Let me see if there's anything else I'd like to say about you guys here. I think what you do with your personality type is quite commendable. Um, I feel like you guys are leaders in your own right and you guys really do try to help. <clears throat> Excuse me. My allergies are really bad. Um, you guys really do try to help the people that cannot help themselves. And yeah, just try not to fall into that gap of like, you know, I, I do everything for other, for everyone else. I don't have time to do it for me. And this is why. Okay. So really take charge and know that it's okay to take charge over your own self. You know, that sometimes we, it's okay to fall apart. Sometimes it's totally okay to fall apart, but we have to rebuild ourselves and we cannot give from an empty battery life, right? Okay, guys, hopefully this helped. Hopefully this made sense. Hopefully this resonated. Um, if it did, let me know down in the comments what group you chose. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, this was a little bit of an experiment and I felt drawn to this in some way. Um, so let me know what you think down in the comments. All right, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Oh, my group number twos, those of you who chose the Modern Witch Tarot deck, we're going to take a look at the personality types that you have or that you are any combination of. And then we're going to take a look at the block that's taking you away from really giving yourself the attention that you need, the self-care and the self-love that you need. And then we're going to be looking at some self-care tips from the self-care oracle. Okay. Again, keep in mind, this is a general reading. So take what does resonate for you. Um, we have different, in each pile, there's a different number of um, archetype cards that popped out. So um, it's interesting. So you can be a combination of these, all of them, or one or something of the sort. <laughs> so keep that in mind as well too. All right, so the first archetype or personality type we have is the mentor. So there's two sides of every personality. There's a light attribute and there's a shadow attribute. So the light attribute for a mentor would be passing on wisdom and refining a student's character. The shadow side would be inability to allow the student to move on to the role of master or imparting false instruction. Okay, mentor. Then we have prince. And we're not talking gender, we're just talking the, the personality. So the light attribute would be romantic, charming, and potential for power. The shadow attribute would be using power for self-aggrandizement. Okay. Then we have the wounded child. So this is uh, the light attributes would be awakens compassion and desire to serve other wounded children and opens the learning path for forgiveness. Shadow attributes would be blaming all dysfunctional relationships on childhood wounds and resisting moving forward 
or resists moving on through forgiveness. All right, wounded child. And then the last one we have is servant. Light attribute is delight in serving others with a free and loving heart. And then the shadow attribute would be using the lack of money as an excuse not to move forward with life. So you could be a combination of all four of these or one more dominant than the other. But this is what came out from the deck for group number two. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the block that you have here because a lot of this is kind of, they're all kind of intertwined here. Um, the servant and the mentor is kind of similar in a sense that this is serving others and a mentor is kind of, you know, a selfless thing as well. So that's interesting to see the combination of um, traits that came up here. All right, so let's take a look at your block. And it is the Knight of Swords. So typically the Knight of Swords is about charging forth and really being focused and driven and having that ambition and just being assertive and, you know, focused is the word that I see a lot. And I feel like with this being a block that we're talking about, it's really um, that feeling of being held back, that you're not being allowed to go forward and do what you want to do. And this could be that you are holding your own self back and not knowing it, or others are holding you back. Okay. And being a mentor and a servant, I really feel like those personalities really need to be free to do what they want, not to not be held back. Right. Especially a prince, right? They, they want to do what they want to do. They want to say what they want to say and be, um, have that, you know, romantic bit about them. Hopefully this is making sense because I see it perfectly in my head. <laughs> so I feel like a lot of this blockage has to do with the feeling of being held back. Now you could be feeling like you're being held back in your job. You could be feeling like you're being held back, um, uh, anywhere in your life. So that's the huge one that I see with this card. And then I also see, since this is a card of abrupt change as well, the fear of change. So it could be that, you know, change in any sort of the, the definition is a, a blockage for you. And so therefore you guys don't want to want to deal with the change. You don't want to go forward and really, um, deal with the drama of the change. You know what I mean? So that is pretty interesting. Okay. So a block we're feeling held back. We're feeling like we can't do what we need to do. So let's see how we can overcome that. And the first card we have is the four of swords. All right. So this is legitimately all about recovery and healing and rest. Okay. Giving yourself that self love, allowing yourself to do so. So sometimes we just go, go, go and do, do, do for everybody else. And we don't take that time for ourselves. And the whole purpose of this reading today is to drive home the point of it needs to happen for you guys. Okay. You guys really need to take time out of your day, five minutes, whatever it may be, and really give yourself some rest, some self love, whatever that looks like to you. And that's what we're looking at today. And that is rest. Okay. Rest, healing, recovery. Okay. You cannot recover if you keep running your battery on low. And then we have judgment. So this is reminding you to not judge yourself so harshly. Okay. Not judging yourself so harshly. Sometimes we definitely, um, are harder on ourselves than we need to be. Right. So yeah, looking back on what you've done or where you've been knowing that it's for a reason. So like having compassion for your past selves as well. So judgment talks about spiritual awakening, enlightenment, 
um, forgiveness and second chances, right? So we're going to really give ourselves a second chance right now and know that we've worked hard, we've done what we needed to do for others, and we need to give ourselves a second chance and really rest and really not judge ourselves so harsh, not, you know, look back and cringe at every little thing or mistake that we did, right? And then we have Empress. So Empress is reminding you to nurture yourself, nurture the projects, the creativity that um, you have. That's gonna help you out right now. If you're feeling blocked, if you're feeling held back, use that blockage to a different degree of really like uh, using your creativity that you have, the abundance of nurturing that you have. Use that to your advantage to yourself. Learn to nurture yourself again, okay? Take time to um, really focus on what you want, what makes you feel good, right? The Empress is also about generosity as much as it is about nurturing and creativity. So while I would say use your generosity for others, I really feel like this moment, generosity towards yourself because you're not really doing that. Your, your personality type here is to do so much for others right? That you're helping others so much. You're teaching, you're, you know, observing and you're, you know, serving others. And it comes from a place of nurturing and, a, and generosity. But right now you need to switch it, flip that switch and really allow yourself to nurture yourself, to take time and really find out what makes you happy. What makes you, you know, what will allow you to rest? What will allow you to um, take time for yourself. Is it a soft blanket that you need to curl up with and read a good book? Like what are those particular things that really allow you to feel good and really allow you to say, you know what? I am an empress. You know what? I, you know, can rule myself with love, compassion, and creativity. All right, and then we have Eight of Pentacles. So this is a card that talks about hard work and mastering your skills. But what I see is, yes, you're mastering your skills in, this, in the sense of everything else and around you. But when we're talking about unblocking this particular issue here, this is about patience. Because you have to have patience in order to master a skill, right? So have patience with yourself and know that sometimes, you know, we're gonna make mistakes. Sometimes we're going to wear ourselves too thin. But understand that with patience, you know, having patience with yourself will allow everything else to fall into place, okay? Just as you have patience with everyone else around you, and sometimes it's a forced patience, right? This is having patience with yourself to know that it's okay to go a little slow. It's okay to, you know, have those certain days where you just, you know, hate it, hate everything and, you know, all of the above, but have patience with yourself. It's going to be hard to try to put yourself first. It's going to be hard to try and, you know, really rest when you have a billion other things going on in your head that you want to get done. When you have a billion other things that you want to put first, have patience with yourself. It's okay. It's all right. It'll all work out. And your last card that we have to help unblock your blockage here is the Hierophant. So this is a card that talks about, um, traditional values and education and that sort of a thing, uh, community and church and spirituality. But what I see this is a commitment to yourself, a commitment to learn things about yourself that help you move forward, that help you um, nurture yourself, to help you rest, learn to learn everything you can about what you, what lights you up and what fulfills you to help you move forward, right? Commit to that because the Hierophant is 
the card of commitment as well. So commit to yourself, commit five minutes, commit an hour, commit a day of the week, commit some time for yourself, commit time to learn what you want out of life, what you want for yourself. Because a lot of the time, again, we focus on others. We focus on every other person around us. And again, you have this Knight of Swords um, blockage. So you guys are really focused. You guys have that drive. You guys have the ambition to do things. But a lot of the times that's focused on others and not yourself. So yes, it's fantastic that you're helping others. Yes, it's fantastic that you wanna teach others and be there for others and do and do and do. But again, let's flip that focus back onto ourselves, okay? This is just kind of, you know, a little, uh, unlocking that little window into what you need out of yourself, right? To learn a little bit about yourself. So hopefully this makes sense. So I feel like your guys' blockage really is, you know, not allowing you guys to focus on yourself. You're focused on everything else and you're feeling held back. You're really feeling like you can't move forward. And this is why you guys need to stop judging yourself, judging your past or putting your past um, uh, cringing about it or, you know, focusing too much on that, you need to be okay with the fact that, yeah, it happened and this, we're moved on from it. You need to have patience with yourself. You need to nurture yourself. You need to commit to all of these things. And at the same time, the most basic of basic self-care is take some time to rest. Take some time to really recover from everything else that ha has been going on. Okay. Hopefully, Hopefully that's making sense. Yeah, uh, you guys, there's been a lot of conflict. You've had a lot of conflict. You've been through a lot of conflict, especially with this wounded child um, personality type. So there's still that blockage that maybe, um, maybe I shouldn't focus on myself. Maybe that's too greedy or maybe, um, you know, uh, since you've been hurt in the past or, or wounded in the past, it's too hard to forgive yourself because you think it's your fault and it's not. Things happen and it, it takes our whole lifetime to really move past that, right? To really learn and really um, accept things, right? So hopefully this is all making sense Again, this is kind of experimental, so something new I'm trying. <laughs> All right, so self-care tip is ground yourself. And I feel like this is important for each and every one of us, regardless of what we're going through, grounding ourselves. Make sure that we feel like we are connected to the earth. Make sure we are connected to the moment. Really um, feel like we are rooted. We are grounded, okay? And a lot of the times people do it differently. Um, I like to go out when it's not raining <laughs> or icky weather. I like to go and stick my feet in the grass or in the dirt barefoot and just imagine a root system like how she's got it <clears throat> flowing from the earth through me up through my head and really breathing through it. That's how I like to feel grounded or really like, you know, taking a moment to pause and sit and think about, you know, the surrounding areas around you, really putting yourself in a, um, a healing bubble. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. And then we have movement. So movement, doing anything and everything from yoga to dancing, to walking around the block, really getting your blood flow going. Okay. So movement can be anything. It could be, you know, um, a particular, uh, like the Tai Chi, it could be, um, you know, yoga, like I said, it could be going for a run. It could be, you know, taking your dogs for a walk, taking your fur babies for a walk or going shopping. But, you know, obviously, uh, in the current environment, <laughs> when I'm posting this, stay indoors. Um, and then we have flow like water. So go with the flow, let things run off your back. Like don't, don't take things too seriously sometimes, right? Just go with the flow. What makes you feel good, right? 
Okay. So let me see if I'm missing anything here, if I'm seeing anything else. Yeah, really commit some time. That's all I see with this card right now. It's committing some time for yourself and learning what makes you feel good. Being generous with your time, being generous um, and patient with yourself. Yeah, resting. Rest is huge. Rest is huge. Maybe try some meditation. Um, sometimes that can help, uh, grounding as well. And it looks like she's meditating here. Yeah. Give yourself a second chance to really, um, put yourself first. You know, sometimes we don't think that we deserve it or that we should be allowed like, um, some fun or some time to ourselves, especially if you're a mother or a father, like it's just, you know, you, you live for your kids, right? You, everything you do is for your kids. So you don't feel like you should take time because you feel like you don't have the time or you feel guilty. This is telling you to do that. Okay. To take some time to commit five minutes, to commit whatever time you can to really sit and breathe and really figure out how to rest and recuperate. Okay. Again, you cannot give on empty not give to others when, when empty. So yeah, I feel like a lot of your blockages here are due to you being focused on other things, you being too driven to on other things. Um, especially if you're a parent, oh my gosh. Yeah. Focused on other things and be feeling held back. Like I feel like what I'm getting is like, I feel like you guys say to yourself all the time, like, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for myself. I, I don't have time to give to myself and it's just going to hold me back. It's just going to, you know, take time out of my day that I could be doing other things for. I could be, you know, doing this, that, and the other. I don't have time for this. And so that's your block. That's literally what's stopping you. You need to take some time, recuperate, like get your eight hours of sleep. Some of you I know are only getting like four to six hours. I know because of this card here. <laughs> so make sure you put the phone down or you, you know, go to bed at a specific time, set your, set your alarm. Okay. I'm so sorry. I know this is like a long, a long thing here, but there were lots of things that I had to say. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully this made sense. Hopefully this resonated with you. And if it did, let me know which group you chose down in the comments below. Again, this is kind of experimental for me to figure this out. Um, it's kind of something new. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it made sense. Um, and don't forget to like subscribe and ring that notification bell and I will see you in my next video. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. So my group number three is those of you who chose the light seer deck. We're going to take a look at your personality type with the archetype cards. You can be one or a combination or all. Um, it's just what came out of the deck. Um, so I feel like a lot of you guys are choosing number three because a lot more cards are <laughs> came out for you guys for that. Um, and then we're going to look at your block for, um, really not going forth and taking the time out for self care, um, for some self love. And then we're going to look at the cards that, um, can help you overcome that blockage. Okay. And then we'll look at the self care Oracle cards for you for some tips on how to do some self care. All right. So the first personality we got is gossip. Now with every personality archetype, there is um, two sides of the coin. There's the light and the shadow. We're going to go over each and every one of them. Um, so gossip will have a negative connotation, but we're not specifically talking about the negative today. <clears throat> so the light attribute is awakens consideration for the feelings of others and honoring trust. Okay. And the shadow is thrives on the power of passing on private or secret information or betraying confidences. Okay. Then we have destroyer. This reminds me a lot of the tarot card, uh, the tower tarot card. <laughs> the light attributes is releasing what is potentially destructive, preparing for new life. And the shadow is intoxication with destructive power or destroying others, dreams or potential. Okay. Victim. 
The light attribute would be prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. And the shadow would be playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity, inability to maintain personal boundaries. Okay. Detective. Uh, light attributes are great powers of obser observation and intuition and desire to seek out the truth. And the shadow attributes would be voyeurism or falsifying information. I'm seeing a little bit of a pattern here. And then we have the monk or the nun. And the light attribute would be selfless devotion and single-minded dedication to spirit. Shadow attributes would be negative judgment of the physical world and excess, excess piety. All right, so this makes sense being that it's the group number three. Three is a magic number, right? So three, um, the mother, maiden, crone, that sort of thing. So I feel like a lot of you, especially with this, this is kind of confirming it for me. A lot of you, um, are, have very strong intuition. A lot of you, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, and you, some of you know things, some of you, um, know things before or don't understand how you know them, but it, it, you know it. Um, but with, the <laughs> with the intuition we also have to worry about this gossip card here right um secret information sometimes the gossip card can can be an can be an issue right because we want to we want to talk about it we want to vocalize what we what we think we feel and know and sometimes a lot of people don't understand, right? Sometimes it's scary or sometimes we don't understand and we think it's scary. So that's interesting. This is very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Okay, so let's see what your block for self-care is. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> wow, okay. So the High Priestess is a card that is all about intuition in the spiritual world. All about it. It's all about wisdom, about knowing things, about um, listening to those gut feelings and listening to your intuition, right? Knowing things before uh, they happen, feeling it in your bones. But being that this is a block, this could go a couple different ways. This could be the absolute fear of your intuitive powers. This could be fearing how you know this information, fearing about um, sometimes we see things in the corner of our eyes and we're not sure or think we hear things. So it could be that fear or it could be um, just not valuing people's privacy or your own privacy, right? or not valuing your spiritual practice, not valuing that time that you should have for yourself to ground yourself, to um, do spiritual homework, so to speak. And it could also be quite literally not listening to your intuition because you're blocking yourself out. You're blocking it, um, you're blocking it intentionally because you know, I, I am guilty of this. I'm not going to lie. Some, there's been years that I did not. And I blocked intentionally because I was tired of knowing things. I was tired of feeling certain things. And, you know, it got to a point that it got a little, um, scary. And so I blocked my intuition out. So therefore I can understand that, that, that fear that, um, or thinking it's thinking it's crazy or it's not not real that sort of a thing. So you can be blocking your intuition, you can be blocking and and doing it purposefully or just honestly subconsciously as well. But I really feel a lot of it has to do with you being um, fearful of these abilities, feel, fearful of your intuition, right? So hopefully this is resonating for a lot of you because this definitely makes sense these personal, uh, personality cards here with this, because here again, we have gossip and this says 
thrives on the power of passing on private or secret information and betraying confidences as the shadow attribute. If you know things, sometimes you know things about certain people and you don't want them to know. You don't want to um, uh, let others know that you know that certain information or you're afraid that you're going to let it slip, you know? Hmm. Honoring trust, trusting yourself to know that like your, your feelings are valued, validated, that your intuition is validated. This is so interesting. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just like being a detective. Yeah. It all makes sense. Okay. So that's your block here. Boop. Okay. I'm going to try to make sure we have all the cards in the frame. Okay. So how to get over or unblock to make yourself, um, feel good about taking time and self-care and self-love, all right? And so we have five of cups. So this is a card that's reminding you to stay positive, reminding you to not focus on the negative, reminding you that there is um, light at the end of the tunnel, that yeah, it's okay to grieve, yeah, it's okay to be sad, but, or it's okay to be scared even, but if you turn around and look at everything else, there is so much positivity, so many beautiful things around you to celebrate and to go forth and do. Okay. So don't focus on the negative, focus on the positive. Okay. Stay positive. And then we have six of cups. So this is a card that talks about the past. It talks about, um, reminiscing. It talks about people, um, that, you know from your past that come into your life. Um, but really, I feel like this is reminding you to look to happy memories, to use those memories as fuel, to wanna keep yourself, um, to, to go and, and really experience the things that you used to love, right? So like, if this really is your block, if you're blocking things out, what did you love to do in the past? What brought you joy? Go back to that. That's what I'm getting from that card here. Okay. What brought you joy? Think about the things and the memories that brought you joy. Mm -hmm. Interesting here. Okay. Two of cups. So this is saying, you know, you need to learn to trust <laughs> quite honestly, learn to trust yourself, learn to trust in yourself, learn to trust your intuition, learn to trust others. This is a card that talks about having a relationship, a kindred spirit, friendships, partnerships, but like soulmate partnerships, like uh, a relationship with a significant other that's a soulmate or a friendship that you guys feel so close to each other. So again, it could be learning to trust, learning to trust yourself, but also spending time with those that you can trust that you feel good around that you can talk to openly about certain things. Okay. So if you feel the need to talk about this block or talk about how this is making you feel, there's somebody, you know, who would not think anything of it. If you called them up right now and had a conversation about it, they would be glad to sit and listen. And that's what this card is talking about. But first and foremost, learn to trust yourself. Once you open yourself up to trust, trusting your intuition, trusting your gut, things will start falling into place. Okay. Then we have two of wands. This is talking about, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone, quite literally. So again, if this is blocking you, tiptoe into it. See about using your intuition. Get yourself a deck of tarot cards. Get yourself a pendulum. Take time to sit in the quiet and listen to that inner voice in your head. Like, what is it talking to you about? Does that make sense? Goodness, I hope it does. But stepping out of your comfort zone, maybe talking to somebody about your intuition or your gut feelings or that sort of a thing. Um, or, you know, talking to somebody about uh, just a spiritual practice, stepping out of your comfort zone. Because this is a card that talks about, you know, making progress and um, working with others, new creative ideas, new partnerships, but you keep staying in that planning zone. So therefore, this is definitely talking about stepping out of your comfort zone in order to move forward, in order to make progress, 
right? So in order to give yourself some self-care, take a risk and take a little bit of a leap out of your comfort zone, okay? And then your last card here is Queen of Wands. Okay, this is a card, I love this card. This is all about being bold and confident, um, being ambitious and strong and taking charge. And honestly, this is just telling you to have self-expression, to take charge of, of yourself, to take charge of your self-care, take charge of you know taking care of trusting your gut, your intuition, being confident in it. Being confident that you know you have the right answers, that you know that you're doing the right thing, that you know that you do know things before other people, that that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna see. I feel like this is more of a lesson in how to use your intuition, to be quite honest with you. I feel like a lot of you guys have just tried to turn it off you try to turn it off because it either scared you or it didn't make sense and it was easier to turn it off than to, you know, figure out how to work through it. That's how I'm reading it. It's quite different from the other two decks here, which is very, very interesting to me because you guys are very intuitive. I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out why it's so different. That's insane to me. Hmm. Again, it could be not valuing your own privacy. So like not allowing yourself to be private about this or private, having private moments is that, that's what I wanna say. Like trusting your own ability to be private. Oh God, I can't even explain it. This is interesting to me. Very, very interesting to me because your personality types up here all fit with, with this, but I feel like this reads as more of how to, maybe that's exactly what it is though. Maybe you're not giving yourself the self care and the attention you need because you're afraid to open up that, that can of worms. But it's quite literally telling you that if you learn to trust your intuition, if you learn to trust yourself and kind of work through maybe issues it, that you had in the past with it or with other people, if you learn to trust your intuition, you're gonna feel so much better. You're gonna feel so much more confident that yes, this is taking a risk, but you're gonna feel so much better and that self-care is just gonna be flowing through if you learn to trust, trust it. Because you'll learn to have your intuition as a parameter on your own um, like energy levels, you know, uh, for your own self-care needs. Because for instance, if you listen to your gut and say, okay, well, you know, for some reason, I really don't feel like going to that specific store. And then, you know, you find out it's closed. I'm just, just saying, or, you know, uh, or you find, you know, if you find out your ex was there or something, I'm just trying to put it in simple terms here, because if you learn to trust your intuition and trust your gut, it's going to open up brand new avenues of self-care for you. And yeah, it's scary. And it's a little bit, um, it is completely out of most people's comfort zones to open that pathway into the intuition area, but you already have it. You, it's already a part of you. So you pushing it down and blocking it is not good for you because it's not allowing you to really use your whole self potential, right? Okay, hopefully this is making sense. I really hope it does because it makes sense in my head. There are some self-care um, cards that we should look at. So one is sing. So sing, sing your heart away. Like turn the volume up to your favorite song in the car and just sing to your heart's content. You know, or like when no one's home and it's just you and you turn the radio on and you just dance around and sing. Not saying that from experience, but... <laughs> This is great. It makes you feel so lighthearted. It makes you feel, you know, 
there's just like a adrenaline rush that you get from you know having fun and just being goofy and singing and you know trying all sorts of different types of singing opera metal you know whatever it is it's fun i enjoy it so <laughs> moving on to journaling so okay this is definitely great um a self-care tip journaling especially for those of you who are intuitive like this because if you write down what you're feeling or how, how things make you feel, or if you write down, if you give yourself a tarot reading and you write down, you know, what your impressions are of that reading, you can start seeing a consistency on what you need to be focusing on. If you journal, you know, what you did throughout the day, how things made you feel, what you were doing, it's a good barometer. Um, this is also making lists. This is also, you know, um, writing down just random thoughts that come your way dream journaling oh that's a good one for intuition because a lot of this too you guys might be blocking out messages in your dreams just saying they come and so like and they're so vivid and you're like why did that come to me like why why did i have that dream you journal it in the morning and then you remember it right? It'll help you remember why you dreamt the things that you dreamt. And then you can look forward and be like, okay, that was a message or that I need to look into, right? Okay. And your last one is sound healing. Wow. Very much with the sound and this music. So this specifically talks about those um, sound bowls, those singing bowls, right? But I feel like not everybody has access to that, right? Or can go to a class or uh, go to um, uh, an area that has someone do that for you. So when I think about sound healing, what are your favorite songs? Again, singing your favorite song, what are, what's a sound that makes you feel, or what's a sound, I guess, but what's a song that makes you feel better when you listen to it? What is a song that makes you think of somebody or think of a happy memory? Go to that song, go to that soundtrack. Sometimes we have a, like, you know, with Spotify, I know people make like certain um, uh, playlists. Uh, you know, what's your playlist that makes you feel extremely happy or extremely awesome when you listen to it? Like that workout playlist or um, the travel playlist, anything like that. So that's really interesting. Oh, it's <laughs> so interesting to me. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm going to say that like 5 million times, but yeah, you guys, your block is your intuition. Your block is, yeah. I'm here to say it's okay. I'm here to say that um, sometimes the unknown is scary and that's why they call it the unknown, right? We don't know what it is. We don't know who it is. We don't know anything, right? Until we start learning but be confident in yourself. It's okay. Be confident in your intuition. Learn to trust yourself. Learn to trust your intuition. And then take a step out of the comfort zone. That's quite amazing to me. Wow. Okay. And we do have trust here. Honoring trust. Breaking things down. Breaking down the barriers that... Um, you put up that maybe um, your religious upbringing put up, maybe you know family put up, breaking down those barriers that help you um, really attain this this intuition to have that. So yeah, okay, that's what's freaking me out about this whole thing is because in order for you guys to really appreciate self care and take time for this self care, you really have to stop blocking your intuition because that in of itself is self care and self-love. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I hope this makes sense because in my head, this makes legitimate sense to me. And hopefully I'm explaining it right. Because like, to me, this is just like amazing. Um, and again, group three, three is a magic number. Three is a very intuitive number. Um, I'm just, I'm kind of blown away by all of this. So hopefully, like I said, this makes sense. And yeah, let me know down in the comments if it does, if this resonates with you, um, because I would really be interested to see because wow. Okay. Anyway, let me know what group you chose down in the comment section. Don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'm sorry if this was kind of, Oh, 
but um, yeah, I, I am kind of shocked with how, how it went. So again, hopefully it made sense. And thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helps you in some way. Um, I know at the moment things are kind of crazy everywhere. And so please stay safe. Please, um, you know, know that we're all in it together. And um, again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.